motion to approve. Second. Second by Norm. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, moving right on. The next is our the creation of the Agriculture Advisory Board. So I'm assuming Jim is gonna make a presentation. Uh, well, I can make a presentation. Um, Something short and sweet. <laughs> short and sweet. Uh, the exit market uh, project that has been um, put forward started about a year and a half ago, two years ago with a committee that was established. Uh, the intent of the committee was first presented because of the fact of special use permits being applied to eggs use within the town of Grand Island. Um, seeing the town did not have uh, really a true representation of the eggs and market uh, folks that were doing farming on Grand Island, a lot of the approvals and submissions and discussions were all done by the Erie County eggs and market. Um, with that, it became very apparent that we needed home rule uh, more on this issue uh, than relying on somebody uh, from another county to actually discuss how eggs and market will, uh, farming will be done uh, within the community of Grand Island. Uh, then we actually got a grant uh, from the New York State Eggs and Market to actually develop a eggs and market um, document for the town of Grand Island, a guideline uh, for farming within the community of Grand Island. And that document would then had the ability to hire uh, a planner to work with them. Uh, all that had been completed in December of last year. Uh, it was adopted um, uh, right at the last meeting of December, I believe. And then after that meeting, there was a discussion with Eggs and Market for Erie County. Uh, they asked us to actually add more content to the document for uh, talking about why we're doing what we're doing and so forth, which we had done. Uh, the town board then approved and adopted those recommendations uh, about, about a month ago. Uh, so in doing so, the first form of action to be done on this document, it would be to establish a committee that actually would turn around and start to uh, implement the eggs and market plan that's been adopted by the town of Grand Island. Um, what is before you was a discussion about the members that would be on this committee and their responsibilities moving forward. Um, in the early discussions, it was decided that maybe uh, the planning board should have uh, some um, ex officiary uh, duties within the committee, but wasn't necessary, but it was put forward as an idea. And I think that's what brought us to the conversation we're having tonight. Um, we have, I believe we have changed that document up so they were not putting the burden onto the planning board and we're moving forward to actually establish the committee. The committee has been established by a guideline of representation of different farmers plus two members at large that would represent citizens at large uh, or the citizens issues that would be adjacent to a farming activity. And that's myself and Jen Persetier. Um, so tonight, the discussion really was, you know, giving the planning board more clarification uh, to their liking as to what they feel the document is or their comment about it. I will say this, um, any action that's taking place by this board is a recommendation to the town board. Anything that's going to bring in discussion of zoning or any other types of issues, the planning board then would be given those documents by directly by the town board itself. In other words, the planning board, the exit market committee would turn around and make a recommendation to the town board. Town board then would turn around and set public hearings. They would then refer it to the planning board for discussion and for the recommendation. So nothing's been on this committee is just like a, a trans transportation board or the planning board or uh, recreation board. It's making recommendations, not making decisions. Uh, one of its goals, though, would be is to help uh, rectify any issues facing uh, farmers and residents on farming issues that they would then examine and see if they could find a resolution where the town could 
uh, be, make both parties happy. Uh, again, to be making recommendations to the town board or to the town departments. And with that, I'll turn it over to Sheila. Sheila, if I missed anything. I don't think you missed anything. That was a good uh, summary. Thank you. Really, we're here to answer questions if anybody has questions. Okay, uh, planning board members, anyone have, have any questions of Sheila or Jim Sharp? Yes, I do. I mean, why do you feel it's necessary to have a representative from the Erie County Department of Environment and Planning? Sheila? Oh, I'm sorry. It's Erie County Farmland Planning. Um, they are the ones that are responsible for making the decisions and determining who is allowed into the Ag District. And so they are very much involved in farming and agriculture across all of Western New York, Erie County. Thank you. And they have been involved um, throughout the two year process of writing the plan. Um, we've gone to them for recommendations, understanding on how other communities and counties have dealt with things or townships have dealt with things. Um, and so they have, uh, they have offered advice along the way and in best ways of representing things and making decisions and determinations. Well, I, you know, I think, I think in terms of, uh, uh, call it ad hoc advice or whatever form of advice that that's fine. But as I stated, it's, a, it's in the minutes, uh, in terms of the uh, board membership itself, I don't think it's at all appropriate to have a non-resident uh, unless, well, no, uh, just leave it as a non-resident be uh, a member of the board in any form, whether it would be a voting member, an alternate member, or for that matter, an ex officio member. They would be liaison. They are, they are a liaison. They are just a reference for us. They are not voting. They are not a member. They are just a liaison. Well, it's uh, the way, the way, the way this is managed. stated, it says two liaison non-voting members. So, uh, you know, there's a contradiction in terms here. Uh, if they're a liaison, you can call them a liaison, but not a member. Okay, point taken. Happy to strike the word member. I think the same with um, a member of the town board. A member of the town board is uh, appointed as a liaison and is not a member per se of, of, of the board. Uh, the, the other is a member from code enforcement, again, as an ex officio representative. Uh, I think, uh, and again, I stated this, and it's so it's, uh, I think it's in the minutes from last time that um, code enforcement, I think, uh, should, uh, you know, by all rights, uh, be an arm's length uh, type of uh, uh, situation. Uh, because, you know, because of its very nature. I mean, they're there to enforce uh, town laws and the zoning code uh, and, and so forth. So I just think that, uh, again, it, it, um, uh, we should not have a member of, uh, of code enforcement uh, in any shape or form on the board. So I happen to agree with you. Um, that was at the request of the town board, I believe, in the last call that that was um, inserted in there. And although I agree that they most definitely have um, a better touch in terms of the issues that have come up, you know, over the many years with um, the code that we have in place, I would agree with you that, um, you know, our meetings are public, they can always attend, they can always um, provide input if they if they choose to, but I tend to agree with you that it's not necessary. Okay. The, the other thing um, is under formation of advisory board uh, membership and so forth, under A, uh, A1, if you will, the seven member, uh, I, I would reword it as possible or uh, as follows, seven member positions and the two alternates, plural, alternates, shall be residents of the town and may include, but not be limited to persons who undertake 
agricultural activities of any size or scale in the town, eliminate the comma after town, for commercial or hobby purposes, or those who provide support to persons undertaking such activities. And then eliminate um, you know, the, the, the last sentence. I'm, I'm not sure whether uh, you know, members recommend a chairperson or the town board designates a chairperson. It really doesn't matter one way or another. I mean, I would eliminate that sentence. Uh, but again, um, I, I wouldn't, um, you know, I, I wouldn't just restrict it to the agricultural uh, uh, community. I, I would eliminate that particular wording. So in other words, and two alternates should, should be residents of the town and may include. So in other words, uh, you could have uh, uh, people that are in no way related to agriculture, uh, but are willing to serve on the board and learn and uh, you know do what's necessary, and um, be be part of the process. Uh, you know, I think it's a good, uh, personally anyway, I think it's a good check and balance. That I completely agree with you, and I think it's worded. It may be the wording that is. Um, confusing, but it does say, which may include, but will not be limited to persons who undertake agriculture. So maybe yeah. we just need to rephrase that slightly. Yeah, so that I, th it I think it just needs to be cleaned up uh, yeah. a, a little. Um, you know, the, the, the other thing is, is, um, and by the way, I've, I've read the resource guide uh, and Great. put out a copy of it. Thank so you. It, it's obviously, you know, it's a, it's a lengthy document. There's there's a lot to it. Some of it, um, you know, reflects back on the comprehensive plan. Some of it reflects on the law as handed down at the state level, and so on and so forth. But I think, um, and Tom Degani, by the way, made a point that I think it was the last town board meeting that uh, the ag committee, as it exists today. Uh, which, you know, it'll become a board, but the board will have a different composition. So people that are on the committee today may or may not be part of that board, uh, but that's to be decided. And uh, along with that, um, uh, I, I think we need uh, maybe a deep dive, if you will, into the specific text and the contents of uh, the resource guide, because in uh, the implementation section, which is the last several pages, I think, of the document itself, um, there's a matrix of activities. And uh, those activities and objectives uh, have timelines to them, short-term, intermediate, long-term, and so on and so forth. And um, you know, a lot of that has to do with policy going forward. A lot of it has to do with, I think, some pretty pretty darn significant changes to the zoning code. Um, and remember, we're, we're crafting something here that uh, is going to have a life to it of many, many, many years, long after most of us on this call you know, are long gone from this process, other people are going to be in the middle of it. And presumably, uh, that document or some variation thereof is going to have a, a a much, much longer life to it. So I think we need to have some discussion along those lines. One of the things, by the way, that jumped uh, out at me, there's a, a section of it called SWAT, which is basically a matrix called, uh, 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 I'm, I'm trying to remember what uh, uh, SWAT is all about, uh, opportunities and threats and, and so on and so forth. Uh, one of the threats that was, um, I can't remember whether it was a threat or, uh, or, or what it was referenced, um, uh, lack of confidence or maybe it was mistrust, I can't remember how it was worded, with regard to town government and uh, code enforcement. Um, I just think that uh, that's, that's not a real good jumping off point. <laughs> if you will, to document something like that. Because anything you put in writing is memorialized. And it implies in that case that, you know, town government does not and maybe has not understood uh, or, or really paid attention to what they're doing or 
have done, and, and likewise with code enforcement. So I would be really, really careful um, about things like that in a document, you know, that's going to have a life to it. Uh, I'd actually, I'd, I'd like to respond to that if you don't mind. Oh, go ahead. Because this was the this thing that we went, we went around and around and Pete can attest to it as can Jim um, about including in the document or not. And because we certainly did not want to create rubbing points that, you know, we didn't need to. However, that's kind of how this, um, this whole process began. Um, and it's, I'm certainly not talking about the current town board or the past town board or anything along those lines. I'm talking about a, a general feel for um, the friction. And there is, there is and has been in the past a very true friction between um, the farming community, people who want to farm their property, and um, the town government, whatever shape, you know, whatever person, whatever being that was at the time. And so we really did spend a lot of time thinking about whether or not that should be in there. And um, the planner that we were working with said, you know, this is a point in time, right? This isn't something that's going to be the truth from now until forever. This is how we got here and this is what started it. And it's important to identify that those were one of the, the um, things that we were gonna try to get over, what, that we were going to try to improve on. So that's the reason that it's in there. It certainly wasn't meant to, you know, as a sticking point for anybody. Um, it, was, it was really just to ensure that, um, you know, it was, it was clear that there has been some friction and that that is something, that is one of our goals is to eliminate that friction. Jim, Tim, I, Tim I, I know I know Tim mentioned last meeting about uh, meeting on a regular basis. Yeah, we typically meet monthly um, through COVID and through this whole trying to get, you know, it's been seven months now trying to get the advisory board document pushed through so um, and, and signed off on. So um, we haven't met as frequently as we did, but we've always up until COVID we always met on a monthly basis. Yeah, but I know Tim, Tim, you, you mentioned something, some language about the meeting, because the, the, in this document, it says they're gonna meet as the chairman, you know, requires and at least three times a year. Correct. Yeah, I, I, I was just suggesting that they meet at least, they have a monthly schedule and a day of the week that they would meet and then right. if they, don't have anything to talk about, they could cancel, but right. we kind of like how that monthly schedule. We I, I, I we like, like how ours is, like, um, yeah. We do, the but, first uh, Thursday, first Thursday of every month is our scheduled meeting. Yeah, I understand that, but that's not what's in the document. I think the document needs to reflect on what you're actually okay. doing. Okay. And, and you should meet monthly, and I agree right. with you. Yeah, we agree you know, like, with that. Like well. the other boards do, and if you have nothing going on that month, you don't you don't meet. Yeah, you that is a lot to be done. done. So my feeling is the board is going to meet monthly. Uh, just so for a point of interest to Bob, um, it also reflected in the document, uh, and I, I didn't catch the paragraph in the extra, in the matrix you were talking to, but in the matrix we also talk about better improving communications between uh, the New York or the Erie the. Yeah, the Erie County Eggs and Market Group, uh, which is also something that we need to do, and that is meaning that the town of Grand Island should communicate uh, on a more regular basis with the Eggs and Market of Erie County, so that we don't have conflicts when members are either trying to uh, join the, the organization and ask permission to be within the Eggs and Market of Erie County, that Grand Island would actually have a say in those applications moving forward. Therefore, we're asking for improving communications on all levels, not just at the town, but also with Erie County. So it's kind of spelling out that the committee should make a serious effort, a, a pointed effort to make sure it has good communications on all levels of government. The, the other question we brought up last meeting was uh, under the mission statement, where upon, now I understand the language has changed a little bit, but on on request of the town board, attempt to minimize, mitigate, resolve conflicts. I, I, just, I just don't understand how an advisory board would get involved in that. Maybe they could give a recommendation to the town board, but not the way it's written. It sounds like they're going to be 
at the table resolving this conflict. And I mean, you also have conflicts with other boards and other items in the town. And we don't have a board that can minimize, mitigate, and resolve conflicts. And that was brought up at last meeting as well. Yeah, and, and, and again, um, and in part I brought it up, but I think it has to do again, reflecting back on code enforcement, which it, the code enforcement obviously is, is to enforce. And um, so, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just not sure uh, about the whole language about minimizing and mediating and resolving conflicts. I mean, if you have a farmer with cows that are drifting onto somebody else's property and the property owner is unhappy, uh, but farmer says, look, uh, uh, you know, everything's under control. Uh, I mean, who's, you know, who's going to resolve a neighborly dispute? And I don't think it's uh, an advisory board. I think, you know, oftentimes these things are conflicts between two property owners, uh, and they have to resolve it themselves by, uh, uh, you know, friendly means or litigation or however it's resolved or take it to code enforcement and have them, uh, you know, adjudicate the thing or the ZBA or whatever have you. Um, so I'm not sure the town board would even be requesting an advisory board to step in and mediate something. Yeah, uh, so... Go ahead, perhaps, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, um, perhaps mediate needs to come out because I, I think that's the sticking word. The advising and um, providing recommendations is actually part of the reason that this board is, is going to be of value in the future. I will tell you why. Code enforcement, um, you know, other people in town government may not understand what is the best way to manage something, right? And, and I'm not talking about code at this point or, or, you know, it's not written in the zoning laws that way. I'm talking about somebody has a concern, submits a complaint, um, and the town board or code enforcement doesn't really understand a way to be able to reduce the risk or, or resolve the issue. That's where having people who are experienced in this would be able to help. And I don't mean sit down and, with the neighbors and have a conversation. I'm talking about providing advice on ways to be able to resolve a situation. Okay, and, and, it, and it I'm, has happened in the past and we have been asked to provide input in the past. All right, I'm, a, I'm gonna step in here, Sheila. Casey, yeah. can you hear, hear us, Casey? Yep, I'm here. All right. Are, are, what's your feeling on that? Shouldn't code enforcement be the the one more involved in an advisory board on to minimize, mitigate, and resolve conflicts? Um, I'm not sure. But let me give you how it would work. An example, yeah. then maybe Casey can answer. So you have a neighbor who's complaining because their next door neighbor has put up. A beehive and they are allergic to bees and they are concerned that the beehive is going to you know sh shoot bees over to their yard right they're they're concerned they have a pool they don't know what to do so is there anything in the town code that says you know you can't have a beehive I don't believe there is and the question that came to us was what do we do? What's the conversation that we can have to make sure everybody, this doesn't blow up into a neighbor issue, that this is able to be resolved um, in a way that both of the neighbors are happy, right? And, and because we have people who are on our board who have um, many beehives, they understand exactly how to mitigate risk to ensure that neighbors aren't going to be bothered by it. So I don't think code enforcement would have that answer, right? I wouldn't expect them to, certainly. Their job is to enforce the code. And I'm not suggesting that we would step in and enforce the code or that we would step in and have a conversation with neighbors, but we can provide information that may make it easier to solve problems like that. That's just one example. 
Hey, look, you know, kind of taking off on that because I think it's a good example. Um, so uh, somebody's a beekeeper, you know, and um, maybe they're not in an ag district and maybe they never intend to be in an ag district, but, you know, they like to keep bees. So it really is probably not going to qualify as a commercial operation, nor is it necessarily ever going to qualify as a hobby operation, but they have, is there anything in the law or in the code as it exists that says, if I want to keep bees and create a hive in my yard, that I can't do it? Uh, and, and, you know, do I have to be X number of feet away from the nearest other residents and all those kinds well, of things that are inherent? Well, well that's, that's interesting you brought that up, Bob, because my next door neighbor has bees and he came over and said, are you concerned with the bees? And and he brought up and said, well, there's nothing in the code that says he can't have a couple of beehives. There, there is nothing that I'm aware of. So, mm -hmm. so if there's nothing that you're aware of, I, I don't understand why we're talking about the bees then. It was, a, it was gonna become a code enforcement issue. So that was exactly why, like just asking the questions. Bees was just an example. There's been examples with goats. There's been examples with chickens. There's been a lot of examples. That was just one I brought up that came to mind. Well, let me okay. offer a suggestion here, and possibly yeah. changing the wording that might you know, yeah. uh, keep everybody happy here. And that would be upon request of the town board, offer input to minimize and resolve conflicts involving agriculture operations in the town. Doesn't it say that? I'm sorry. No, I mean, it no, says attempt to minimize, mediate. I'm saying. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I was looking a line above. You, you're right. You're right. You're right. Upon request of the town, um, offer input to minimize and resolve conflicts. And that's doing exactly what you were just talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I, and I think, um, you know, whatever the conflict is, you got to be a little bit careful um, who, who's engaged in that process, because certainly uh, with a lot of these things, you know, the town, the town board does not want to get directly involved in neighbor to neighbor disputes. Okay. It's not their job. And, um, so, uh, well, you know, whether it's bees, whether it's goats, whether it's chickens, um, and by the way, there was a good example uh, talking about chickens that came up just uh, recently and was heard before the ZBA at their most recent meeting. I heard. Uh, yeah. Um, so, but, uh, you know, you can go and watch the live stream of that. The whole thing was kind of... Uh, also under powers and duties H, it says aid in resolving conflicts involving agricultural op operations. I think at our request of the town board, we actually went through this with the town attorney and he was comfortable with the language because it very clearly says at the request of the town board, aid in resolving conflicts. Aid is providing advice, providing education, whatever, right? It says at the request of town board aid. Well, uh, you know, getting back to Norm's comment earlier, I think he used the word input if you took aid. And, yeah. You know, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to get too nitpicky, but uh, just for the yeah, sake I, of consistency. I don't like the word aid either. Okay. Anybody else have anything else they want to bring up on this? Well, I, I guess just uh, a, a general question, I'll, I'll pose it to Sheila, Jim, uh, or anybody else that wants to comment. Um, you know, there's, there's a chapter of the code, 145, farming, right to farm, uh, the intent and purpose, and then it goes on, definitions, and so on and so forth, three or four pages long. Um, if you were to propose um, modifications uh, in some form or another to, to that, uh, going forward in the short term or, or whenever, uh, what would you propose? One of the first things that we would propose is actually aligning the state code, um, aligning our town code with the state right to farm law. We are missing a very key component, which is livestock. Livestock was stripped out of the town code and did not, um, and it is in the state code. 
Okay, can you expand on that a little bit? Because obviously, you know, there's there's uh, uh, livestock's a broad category: cows and goats and pigs and etc. That's it, all uh, of it. Yeah, right, uh, and 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 much more. But um, you know, obviously, we have in our code um, requirements with respect to uh, distance from a neighboring residence, and you know, those types of things, and how the animals are kept, and so forth. Uh, so what is it about uh, the current regs, um, uh, you know, the, the, um, uh, the, the measurements and, and the other criteria that, uh, that you don't like or that you would change? So it, that's a pretty complex question. I will try to give you a simple answer so we don't spend sure, two no, hours. That's fine. That. Yeah. Because right. um, there's so a Bills game I mean, going on right now, by the way. So What's that? I, no, I'm, I'm playing with, there's a Bills game going on. <laughs> there you I'm go. I'm multitasking. Yeah, everybody, wants it's... To, everybody wants this to hurry up so they can go watch the Bills. Yeah. Um, so, you know, having the livestock portion not be in the town code, um, the right to farm law, which gives, I don't know, there's, you know, A through L or something, and we're missing one of them, which directly speaks to livestock. And having that not in there, forces residents to have to go through a special use permit or a variance. Um, the variance then or the special use permit fall back on what I would consider to be overly restrictive requirements because they apply to everything. So you need two acres to have one chicken. You need two acres to have one horse. That just doesn't make any sense, right? There are so Cornell um, has put out land management, uh, pretty much guidelines on appropriate land management and how much livestock you could put into a specific area because you're gonna have to have pasturing area, you have to have room for um, composting manure, right? There's a, a lot of things that go into land management, pasture management. And so the rules need to be um, a little bit more uh, following what the guidelines are for proper agriculture and, and pasture management versus just the, this very generic two acres to have one, one livestock, whether it's a chicken or a duck or a, a horse. That's just one of the things. I think there's a lot of, um, there's gonna be a lot of nuances to all of this, which is why that document is as big as it is, um, the resource guide because there was a lot of thought that went into how we can do this best. What we do not want to do is, um, as one of my fellow farmers likes to say, burn hay bales and um, you know get everybody upset, right? We are residents, we are neighbors. We certainly don't want a cow peering into our kitchen window any more than you do. So there, are, there has to be some clearly defined um, changes. Um, but again, you know, we recommend them, right? We are not going to enforce them. We are not going to write the law. We are, you know, we are not doing that portion. We're working on working with the right people to have those implemented and go in front of the right people. Does that help? Yep. Thank you, Thanks. Sheila. Uh, are, are chickens livestock or are they? Uh, chickens are considered livestock in this, yeah, in, in the right to farm law, yeah. Right. I think that the one thing that I'd like to add here, it's really important, is right now, if we do not have a mechanism within the town of Grand Island to deal with egg use within the community, then you're resorting to dealing with the New York State eggs market as well as Erie County. So therefore, you have an arm length that you're trying to resolve your local problem. This board basically will help resolve it locally before it even gets to the county or even gets to the state. Uh, because that's the only recourse that a farmer has if they're challenged and they and go for their defense. And right now, I think they were trying to, and we have been for the last two years, trying to work with the farmers without it going in to be a um, contested with eggs and market of New York State coming in to make a, a rec or making a recommendation or a, a finding on us. So I think it's very important that we have home rule here that we have local people dealing with the local issues. And I think that's what's so important about this board. 
And the other one is that when people of Grand Island decide, or farmers of Grand Island decide to join the eggs and market of Erie County, again, the local board, our Grand Island board, is going to review those and work with the farmers to make sure they're even applicable and make recommendations because they're going to be, the county's going to be looking for the recommendation from Grand Island as to should they be in or not be in. And I think that's why it's so important this board to be established. And one, I, I, most important to me is local representation. I mean, we are dealing with our own problems, not having somebody from the outside deal with our problems. Okay, thanks, Jim. Now, board members, is this something that we want to okay. have rewritten again, or do we want to try to make a motion tonight? Uh, before you say that, I'd like to make one point that anything that is brought forward, especially you brought up the issue of the right to farm law. Um, the, this board will make recommendations forward as to uh, uh, what it would like to see happen, and that is for me and more in concert with the New York State Eggs and Market. But that decision, uh, before it's made by the town board, will go to the planning board for discussion. Because again, it's changing code. And anytime you're changing the code, the planning board is given the front seat on addressing it. So there's no circumventing here by this board or passing any or, uh, ordinances or codes that are gonna be modified without your participation going forward. And I believe that this board would be brought in and make testimony to you all on why they did what they're doing or why they're doing what they're doing. But that is part of the process we're gonna to learn to do as we go forward. So that's just my point I wanna make. Thanks, Jim. Uh, Dave, what, then I'll, what I'll do is I'll make a motion to, um, to pass this Agriculture Advisory Board with the input, with the suggested input that we gave this evening. I second that. Jeremy, second. Any further discussion? Well, the, I, I think this evening, you know, we, we can include the input that we uh, specified at the last meeting as well. Uh, just, you know, just to um, uh, it, it include anything that, uh, that may not have been discussed tonight. Is that all right to add that to your motion, Norm? Well, I think what we discussed last meeting, many of those items were already uh, incorporated. I mean, maybe not to a hundred percent resolution of like we'd like to see, but those were incorporated. So, I mean, they're not taking out, you know, the conflict resolution. They were rewording it now to make it more amenable to us. Right. I I'd like to stick with my current motion. Okay. Uh, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Bob, Bob, did you vote? I did, I said aye. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't see you. Okay, so we're all set and, and we wish you luck. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks Thank for your you. time. We truly appreciate it. We look forward to working with you. Okay, you. moving on to communications received and filed. And then now we're to unfinished business, uh, the Grand Island Apartments. I noticed that we have a new drawing. Before I open for discussion, I just want to check with Bob Westfall about the topo, because that was the yep, and I'll, 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 last I'll, meeting. Yep. I, I, can you guys hear me okay? Yes. yes. Okay. So I, I did meet with, with Richard. Um, had a discussion. He and Ron and myself met. Um, I'm trying to remember if Casey was there or not, and I apologize if I, I don't recall. Um, but we went over some of the logistics. I feel the, the document that he revised and gave me has given me the information I requested. Um, so, I, you know, we understand the drainage. We understand the changes to the site to not negatively impact other properties. Uh, with what they're proposing to do. So from the engineering side, we are comfortable what he, with what he's submitted. Okay, thank you, Bob. Casey, are you there? Can you hear me, Casey? Yep, I'm here. Okay, when we talked about this last time, there was some question on parking in the front yards, in the front setback. Correct. How's, how are your, how's your department with that issue? 
Um, I mean, we're okay with the comments you had last time. They moved your the parking that you requested and added landscaping in its place. I mean, okay. we don't have an issue with that. Okay. And uh, how about the parking, the amount of parking? That was dirt, dirt. But they're showing 58 spaces and we have 26 units. We, you know, if you have a couple of cars per unit, that's 52. And then we're going to need visitor parking, possibly some employee parking, um, repairman parking. Are we good with just the 58 parking spaces? Plus that includes handicap parking. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, that's up for you guys to decide, but that, that appears adequate. Okay. And how about snow removal? Where uh, the, the fellow that's representing them, how about snow removal? What do you plan on doing with your snow? I mean, it doesn't look like you have any more area left. There's a large area, a large grass area in the back that we can we can pile snow. Okay. And my other question to you is the dumpster in the front along Grand Island Boulevard. Mm -hmm. I, I would suggest that that get shoved way into the back parking area somewhere instead of right off to, I mean, it's right along the boulevard. So the thought process on the dumpster in that location, uh, if we put it towards the back, uh, I understand uh, that it would, it would look a little bit nicer to be out of sight, but it, it, cause, it poses a danger to everybody that would be going to their units in the back there. Uh, if a dump truck would have to drive, or a garbage truck would have to drive all the way to the end and then reverse all the way back. Um, plus it, it really deteriorates the roadways um, when, when garbage trucks are going on the roads all the way back there. So what we did was we put a tree in front of it, we put a, a wooden fence, and we also put adrovites all the way around it to kind of screen that dumpster location. Any uh, other members, any other comments? Well, uh, yeah, uh, you know, e even though there's uh, maybe a perceived danger or a potential danger with, with a, a truck backing up, again, uh, we've not allowed um, uh, dumpsters uh, and, and the front setback in the past, and I don't think we should set a precedent here. So I think that thing should be shoved back uh, as far as it possibly can. Any other, any other comments from any other board members? Yeah. Um, is there enough room in the rear of the property to put as some sort of turnaround for uh, a dump truck to come in? Uh, garbage truck to come in and remove the garbage safely we were trying to there's no way for him to go uh, around the building because there's a large creek back there um but you know like the plan was to just have that's why we tried to keep it towards the front of the building that's also the uh the maintenance crew uh, for the building will also be collecting the garbage from all the tenants and then taking it out to the front um to dispose of it all so they're trying to keep it in a, in a in an orderly location. I mean, can't you do some type of three-point turn in the back without bothering that creek? We're also trying to, to kind of utilize the existing pavement area that we already have um, and not really expand past that. I, I understand your position, but again, I have to agree with Bob putting the dumpster in the front yard setback is a little odd. Well, not, not only a little odd, but again, I, I, I don't think it should be allowed. I don't want to uh, set a bad precedent. And, yeah, and if you have to, uh, you know, within the confines of the existing parking or pavement, create some kind of three-point uh, turnaround, then uh, so be it. Do what you got to do. Any other comments? Tim, Sandy, Norm, Jeremy? Um, I have one more. Um, the I see that you guys added a another handicap spot in the rear of the property. Um, I'm not necessarily familiar with uh, whether or not the location of that should be with the others or or uh, in the front of the property as well. Is that compliant with ADA? Is it just more of a spacing 
or access uh, in and out of the vehicle for handicapped occupants. So the reason we put that at the rear of the property is there is an existing space um, or that or existing single story portion of the building back there. And that is going to be an accessible unit. Um, so that'll be the, uh, it's a brand new unit that we're going to put in there and that will be an accessible unit. So we're trying to keep that handicapped spot as close to that accessible unit as possible. We, we would gladly put it in the front if you guys wanted that, but it just seems to make more sense to put it next to the handicapped unit. Well, as long as there's not a, uh, yeah, there's some type of violation for that, you know, to happen, then I don't see any issue with it. It's just more of, uh, understanding the location for it. So, I mean, I think it's, I don't have an issue with it. If you have an addition back there, then that's fine. But, but again, can't that, I'm sure you're going to have some type of assigned parking. So can't your accessible unit have the parking space right next to that? It looks like uh, I right next to that unit and maybe where that handicap parking is, is that could be some type of the dumpster location? I think I could probably talk the, uh, the developers into putting it at the end of the road, just leaving the, the pavement the way it is and have that dumpster right at the end of that road. Anyone else have any other questions? A motion, motion anyone? Uh, I motion, uh, you know, outside of moving the dumpster to the back and maybe uh, creating a three-point turnaround. Uh, if they're able to do that, I, I motion to approve it. I, I would second that. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? No one. So that carried. You're all set, sir. You just Thank have you. to straighten out moving that dumpster and... You're good to go. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, should we make a motion to adjourn and then do our tutorials real quick? Because I know everyone wants to get to the Bills game here. Yeah, I, I guess it's unfinished business. Yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion. Or did you make a motion, Dave? No, no, I'm asking if anyone. Okay, Bob made a motion, a second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so let's uh, go off of live streaming, Pete. And